super excited about today's guest. We were meaning to do more content with today's guest, and I'm super excited today because we have Angie. Now, Angie has worked with a lot of big names in music, um, hip hop or trap specifically. Would you say? Yeah, I'd say yeah. R&B, a little bit of everything, but nice. definitely specifically hip hop. Nice. And um, I've given my introduction, but I always like my 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 guests to give an introduction to themselves. So, Angie, who is Angie, and what do you do? Yeah, so my name is Angie. I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I am an engineer, recording engineer, and mixer. Overall fan of Pro Tools, so definitely very excited to be doing this. Yes, nice, nice. So tell me, Angie, um, how did you kind of? So obviously now you you know you're working with tons of artists that are huge, right? Um, it wasn't that easy to get there. So can we maybe talk through your journey of like kind of like when you was like, oh, I want to do this for the rest of my life, or kind of like. Did you go to college or how, how did it come about? Yeah, I ended up going to school for engineering and that's really where I fell in love with it. Um, having done, I did business and engineering. Yeah. And then once I started getting into the studio, I was just like, man, I just, really, I just fell in love with it. Obviously, you learn a lot when you're in school, yeah. but I really wanted to get like that hands-on experience. Even when I was in school, I was just like recording people for free, like just doing like like my little makeshift setup, just trying to figure out, like just trying yeah. to teach myself because I was like learning the basics in school but I was like okay how do I take like how do I really get that hands-on experience so it started off with me just kind of teaching myself and then interning which is really where you get the best hands-on experience wow and and would you say that kind of was you doing something else before kind of engineering was there anything else that you was kind of like going into or or like just before school was it like I want to do this or like kind of want to work here was it just did you always have a passion for music somewhere, somehow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like since I was young, I've always, always had a passion for music. I guess as I got older and I started to understand how the industry works, I started to learn like, you know, there's different avenues in the industry rather than like, I always think as a kid, like just being the artist, right? And then I started to see like all the behind the scenes yeah, things where I can yeah. really like make a career in music and I was excited by it, so. And then if we can just maybe touch on what we're going to talk about today is um, the recording process. So obviously you do quite a lot of tracking. Would you say it's like 50-50 with mixing or...? Yeah, I feel like for the most part, like the way I've been recording is really like back to back albums. Wow. So yeah. I've really been like 24 7, like staring at Pro Tools <laughs> recording. And also, it's like when I do, yeah. I mean, I'm, when it's in those like little time crunches of recording, yeah. I don't really have time off to say I can mix, but I try to find some time yeah. in between to actually get like a one two mix done. But definitely like when I'm locked in like album mode, it's just straight recording. Like there's no time for nothing else. So. And, and just to talk, cause obviously, you know, a lot of people out there, it's a new, like new generation of creators, mm -hmm. as we say. And um, they probably think you're going to like massive studios with, and sometimes you're in situations where the artists might be on tour. Can we maybe, have you recorded on tour before? Oh yeah, right? yeah, for sure. Can we touch on that maybe a little bit on your recording process during a tour? Definitely, yeah. Like I think that's something I pride myself on a lot is just being able to record like wherever the artist is at and just make them as comfortable as possible. So like obviously on tour, you know, they have like the tour like recording setups on the tour bus and that kind of stuff. But like I like to record mainly in hotel rooms if possible. Like or not even that's pretty much like the the setups that like the artist will feel most comfortable. Obviously, you know, if you have the chance to go to a studio in different cities you're in. It's ideal and as an engineer you know having access to all that gear is always fun of course. <laughs> but i definitely you know you get to travel with like your essential stuff yeah. and then just make sure that you can get the best sonic sound wherever you're at recording so and so what makes you kind of like unique to kind of you know what why do, why do people set you for engineering is it just like maybe because like again you said about the gear is it about kind of your speed on pro tools or kind of what you know or is it like you just get the job done in time or kind of what what do you think it is yeah i would say like it's definitely a combination of all those things like so many factors come into play right yeah, yeah. um i think there's also a level of comfortability like just making sure that the artist is comfortable throughout yeah. the whole process and that comes with like like i was saying being able to record them wherever they're at or that speed in Pro Tools, yeah. which that, especially with rappers who are going in freestyling and not necessarily writing yeah. down their raps, yeah. Pro Tools is their pen and paper. So for you to go in and be able to capture their, yeah, like you got to really be able to like ease that whole workflow, allow them to be as creative as possible and be able to capture all their ideas in a way that's like just seamless and makes their life easy, right? So and that's definitely super valuable. Do you ever do, so a lot of people, you know, like it's really hard to say that like someone records or mixes or produces like these days, it feels like a lot of people do a lot more than that. Do you feel like you're sometimes doing some co-production bits in there? You're kind of like moving stuff around and oh, dropping the beat, doing yeah. this. Like there's a lot of stuff that comes with what you're doing, right? Like, Definitely, yeah. Because it's like, for the most part, like, you know, I'll have the relationship with the producers where they're sending me beats directly. And a lot of the beats sometimes is like really just like loops or there's not really like a song structure to it. So right. the artist will have an idea, but like in order to structure the song, you're really the person in the room. The producer's not necessarily always in the room. Right. So you're kind of playing that traditional role of structuring the song right okay so yeah there's definitely like a co-production element some could argue yeah. that yeah being 100%. able to do that and then another thing that i would say was um so 
we touched a little bit on the recording process and obviously like you know how because i because i'm on your instagram and i follow your stuff and you know sometimes like wow you're like in this room recording and now you're here and now you're there i find it so i honestly inspiring because when oh, you hear the quality of it you're like whoa <laughs> like that's mad so it's just insane that you know just having pro tools and a small interface or whatever it might be does kind of does the job and more right mm-hmm. it's about the engineer and learning your tools i guess and learning plugins know how to use them not like just buy 100 plugins yeah like learn your compressor learn your eq and stuff Definitely. like that um what advice would you give to someone who's kind of growing up um and in your situation because obviously like i said the names you're working with are insane and they, they're huge and but there was a point when you started, it was like, oh, wow, how do I get to that position? What would you tell yourself back kind of now? Um, yeah. Oh, man. Like, honestly, it's still so surreal. Like, <laughs> definitely doesn't feel real sometimes. But I would definitely say, like, just keep at it. Okay. There was times where I was like, you know, really like down bad. Like this shit, like no one really talks about sometimes. But it's like mm-hmm. where you just feel like, man, is you, you never really know if it's going to work out or if, yeah. how shit's going to end up going out. But I mean, it just got to like, you know tough it out stick with it like i think i always kind of just kept the mentality of like keep your head down do amazing work you know and just kind of just outwork everybody that was kind of like my mantra going through it was just like outwork everybody and there is no yeah. like kind of certain hours of what you, what you yeah. do right <laughs> that's what i would be telling myself i'm like man it's been like i still haven't gone to bed last night so oh, really? i've been yeah this is a nice little <laughs> oh. but it'd be like that and it's like it's just when you love what you do. Like, yeah. I don't feel tired at all. Like, I'm excited. Right after this, I'm going straight to the studio again. Like, it's just... Oh, that is crazy. So I think it's that level of, like... Excitement. That eager and, like, and passion where I was, like, yeah, I just... I had to just make it work. There was no way I wasn't going to make it work. Well, look, Angie, thank you so much. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been a great episode. And, Angie, thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. Thank you very much.